Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and today we have some breaking Magic the Gathering news to talk about. Wizards announced the contents of their upcoming release, from the vault lore, which is actually gonna come out August 19th. So we're gonna look at all the cards in this set. There's 15 cards to look at. These are all foiled with a special from the vault foiling. I'll talk about that in a second. And they also included a foil token as well. So we'll look at everything here. And we're also gonna look at the value of the original versions of these cards, just so you have some idea what kind of value this product actually holds. Now, having said that, if you're not familiar with this product, just a little bit of quick background. Like I said, it comes out August 19th. The MSRP for this is $34.99. Now, there's a couple downsides to this product. First off, it's the price. Even though that's a very, very reasonable price for what you're gonna see here, unfortunately, it's very hard to find it at MSRP. Most stores are going to sell it for quite a bit more than that. Now, last year I picked up from the Vault of Angels for about $50 and I was okay with that. I didn't wanna pay more than $50 for that product, uh, but it's very common to see these sold for anywhere between 50 to sometimes close to $100. I think this particular one will probably sold for between around 50 to 80 in most places. I do feel like this particular from the Vault is maybe not quite as exciting as some that we've seen in the past, but yet at the same time better than others. So maybe kind of a middle of the road really uh, but again, we'll go through the cards. You can assess for yourself if this is a product you want to pick up. Another downside to this is the special foiling process. Unfortunately, in the past, and if you saw my box opening last year when we opened the From the Vault Angels, you'll notice that there's a warping that comes along with this foiling process. The cards tend to get warped and bent very easily, and sometimes there's a little bit of uh, foil shaving on the edges. Uh, the shavings gotten better over the last few years, but the cards still bend. Uh, you kind of have to press them back into shape by putting them into a binder or something. Some people don't mind. I mean, obviously they're still playable, uh, but other people would be happier with just a normal foil version of the card as opposed to this version. Uh, now, from the positive side, this is a great set to help you bolster a cube. So if you're a cube enthusiast, you pick one of these up every year, you can really start to push your cube into the next level. There's also some good cards for Commander and Legacy typically in these packages. You're gonna find this year's though is very weak for Modern. And also, obviously this isn't a product if you're a standard player that you're looking for. Uh, but if you're a cube player or even commander, there might be some things here for you. There's a couple cards that really do stand out and we'll take a look at those. Uh, finally, the last thing I wanna mention was the theme for this year is lore. So that's kind of interesting because it allows wizards to do a wide variety of different cards. Basically, as long as it's a card that showcases a main story plot, or a major character, it kind of fits into the set. In the past, we saw things like From the Vault to Angels. If you were a big Angel fan, it was awesome. If you weren't really into Angels, you probably weren't interested in the set. Well, this does allow for a little more variety of players to perhaps be interested. So let's go ahead and see what's in here. And we're gonna start off with the first card, Beseech the Queen. This was originally from Shadowmoor. Now, if you want to pick up an original version of this, it's only gonna run you $4. So foil will run you about nine. So this is a fine inclusion, but nothing super special. Next we have Cabal Ritual. Okay, this is a little better. Storm players like Cabal Ritual. This is actually a pretty decent card, uh, but it's still a not very expensive card. You can pick it up. It was originally from Torment, but you can find those for about $2 or less. Uh, if you want a foil, it'll cost you a little more. It could be about $16 or so to get a foil Cabal Ritual. Now, I will say, though, this version does have brand new art, and the art on this actually looks pretty awesome. So I do have a feeling, even with the awkward foiling process, that this might be a sought-after card. Next, we have Conflux, which, of course, is from Conflux. <laughs> Again, this is another kind of big, splashy card, good for Commander decks. Um, not very expensive, though. You can pick one of these up usually for under $4. Foils might run you around 12 Next we have Dark Depths, and this is probably the crown jewel of the whole set. This is a very popular card in Eternal formats, especially Cube, huge Cube card. And this is a card that's banned in Modern, but still runs a pretty high price tag. You don't see that all the time. So this is still a card that's gonna run you over $60 if you wanna pick up a regular copy. And if you want a foil, it's about $185. So this card's got a nice price tag attached to it. It's a fan favorite card, and this is probably what's gonna move the most amounts of this particular set, I think. And in addition to the Dark Depths, you also get a Merit Lage token. And this will run you, if you want the original version of this, about $17. Now, this is a 
very similar looking version to the one that was printed as a promo during the cold snap pre-release and launch weekends uh, so it's not a brand new thing but it is very hard to come by a lot of players have probably never even seen this token uh, so it's a pretty cool inclusion as well Next we have Glissa the Trader, and we're back down kind of on the lower side again. This is a Meriden Besieged card, um, only three bucks if you want to pick one of these up. Uh, if you want to foil, seven, eight dollars will run you. Uh, again, it's a decent card, definitely gets commander play. Next we have the Hell Vault. Now this was originally from Dark Ascension, a really big piece of that original Innistrad story with Avacyn and Grizzlebrand being trapped in the Hell Vault together. Unfortunately, as epic as it was from a story point of view, <laughs> probably not so epic as an actual card. Uh, you can pick these up for 69 cents, even though this was a mythic in Dark Ascension, and you can get foil for usually under two dollars so i mean it's here it definitely meets the criteria of being a strong lore card uh but there's not too much else to say about it next we have memnarch uh, this one's a little better I and mean, this is another fan favorite card does see playing cubes and, and such uh from dark steel originally again not a super expensive card you can pick these up for you know usually between seven and eight dollars uh foils are a little more 20 to 25 dollars typically um it's a good card again it's not going to fit everywhere for all players but it does have a role Mind's Desire. Now this one's kind of fun because this has new art, which is awesome. I really like the art on this and what they did with it. The downside is it's also not super expensive. I mean, you can pick these up for you know, around a dollar. Foils do cost you a little more between $15 and $16. And that's basically because this card does have a home in Storm decks. Cubes as well, they're trying to do a Storm angle and such. So uh, I do like this card. I think this one is a good inclusion, even though financially it might not be super high. Momir Vig, Simic a Visionary. Now this is a pretty popular commander card, so this is gonna have a little bit of a bigger price tag to it. Now this was originally printed in Dissension, and this is brand new art. And if you've seen the Dissension art, it's okay. I, I, I liked it, uh, but this one I actually like better. Typically I like the older art better than the newer one, but I don't know, something about this one kind of catches me. Um, if you want the original, it'll run you about eight, nine dollars. Uh, foils a little pricier again because it is a popular card in certain circles uh, running about $25 near-death experience uh, here's another one that's just kind of like okay it's definitely lore related <laughs> um, it's from rise of the Eldrazi and it's fine it definitely does see commander play I've seen people try to play this in commander um, 48 cents though if you want to pick one of these up foils will cost you usually about a dollar Phyrexian Processor. Now this was originally from Urza Saga and of course there was no foil version of that. Uh, the Urza Saga version has different art. However, this was reprinted in a dual deck a few years back and this is the art from the dual deck. So this isn't brand new art. Um, if you want an original version of this, it's under $2. Uh, but this is the first time you can get it in foil. So there's something to be said for that. Teleria West. I do think this one's a good inclusion. It's great from a lore point of view. It's a very nice looking card. It looks good with a foil treatment and it's actually playable. <laughs> uh, this card does see a lot of play in a lot of different places, but uh, if you want a future sight version of it, it's not super expensive. You can get them for like five bucks. Foils are a little pricier though at about 20 to 25 typically, but I do like this card in the set. Irmazawa's Jite. Now, this one is maybe the second most exciting card in the set. A lot of players will pick this set up for this card. Originally printed in Betrayers of Kamigawa. Uh, again, this is one of those awkward cards that it's banned in Modern. If it wasn't banned in Modern, it probably would be worth a whole lot more, and a lot more players would want to get their hands on it. Uh, but as it stands now, it's worth about $32, $33. Now, if you want an original foil from Kamigawa, now that will run you about two eighteen sixty nine right now, uh, but there was a promo foil that's a lot cheaper than that. Uh, but I just included that version because it was the original. Uh, this is a card again. It's not for everyone. If I'm a modern player, I'm probably not super excited about this. But if I'm a cube player, this is really cool. And this is a card that's pretty old now. It's never been reprinted other than in promo form. So that's actually pretty exciting uh they didn't change the art or anything but i think that's okay because i really like the art on this card and it's very powerful if you've never played with it try it out it's pretty amazing 
And finally, the last card is Unmasked from Mercadian Masks. Again, not a super expensive card, but this one's pretty popular, again, in Eternal formats. Uh, only running about 4 or $5 if you want to pick one of these up. But if you want a foil, especially in the old days, it was hard to come by foils. So uh, they're a little rarer than more contemporary foils. Uh, but yeah, it's still going to run you almost $40 if you want to pick that up. So I think that's a good inclusion, too. It's not a card that maybe people think of immediately as a huge value card, but it does see a fair amount of play for sure. Now... Having said that, if you add up those prices, what do you get? Well, if you were to buy the regular original versions of all these cards, uh, it would run you $137.19. If you're trying to get all the foils from the original versions, it would run you $593.22. So there's definitely value to be had here. Now, if you could find this for $35, sure, there'd be great value. But honestly, I wouldn't spend more than... I'd hate to spend more than probably 60 70 on this, quite honestly. This is a product that's really for cube commander players, maybe some legacy players. Uh, it's really not for modern players, obviously. As you can see, the two main cards are both banned in modern, so that's very awkward. And that's kind of sad. I wish there was something, at least one card, that would have been a nice kind of modern chase card in here. Uh, we didn't really truly get that, unfortunately. But this is still a great product for cube enthusiasts and at least some commander players out there that are trying to pick up some cards. So there you have it. Hope that lets you make a decision of whether or not you want to pick this up. And if you do want to pick it up, what you're willing to spend on it. Like I said, don't overpay. Uh, do the legwork. Look around. Uh, like I said, last year I was able to get one for $50.00. And I thought that was a pretty good deal. It was the cheapest I saw it. And if I didn't do the extra work, I probably would have paid like 80 for it, which was ridiculous. Another option you have is just wait a little while because everybody will price these up around the $80, $90 mark when they first come out. And then when they don't sell in a few months and they're trying to clear shelf space for, say, you know, the commander decks that are coming out or what have you, guess what? The value of this will start to go down very, very quickly. So uh, either wait it out or do a little work to try to find a shop that's going to sell it to you at a fair price. Uh, don't touch it for $80, $90, $100, to be quite honest. You're just not going to find the value there. So having said that, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video, like all my videos, was made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Even a donation of a dollar helps me to keep growing this community and creating better quality content for all of you. Check out our Patreon page for exclusive giveaways and future goals for the channel. If you haven't yet had a chance to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, product openings, or finance videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.